Hey everyone, I'm Gretchen Rubin, uh, a co-host of the Happier with Gretchen Rubin podcast, and this is the Coping with COVID-19 conversation. And I'm very excited because special guest, Rachel Hollis is gonna be joining me today. Um, Elizabeth gets the day off and I get to talk to Rachel and she's gonna be joining in a second. Um, but while she's joining, um, Put in the comments, where are you calling from? Where are you watching from? It's always so fun to see where people are. And um, hang on, I'm gonna get Rachel. Um, and I want to, um, this is always the tricky part, right? Um, I always uh, am so interested to see where everybody is in the world. I see Elizabeth is there, she's watching too, that's excellent. Um, and, Let's see. There she is. I'm bringing her in. Rachel. And of course, Rachel Hollis is the author of the mega bestsellers, Girl, uh, Wash Your Face, Girl, Stop Apologizing, and the Rise Podcast. Hello. 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 How are you? I'm good. This is so exciting. Technology is wonderful when it works. When it works, exactly. I make no guarantees that it will continue to work or that one of my four children will not run into this room. Anything can happen in quarantine. No, I think that's part of the fun of it is getting to look <laughs> over people's shoulders and see like, I think I'm a little crooked right now, but hey, you know, so it goes. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we're I'm so excited to talk to you because I think you're in um, the position of having the same challenges that everybody has, but at kind of a bigger level. So I have two kids, you have four kids, um, and you have a big team that you work with, and yet you're safe at home. Kind of what are the things that are working for you as you manage a big family and a big team and, and you know, the COVID-19 situation? Yeah, so I have fought really hard for the rituals and habits that I had before all of this started to just make sure yeah. that they're still a part of my life. And yeah. weirdly, sometimes things that I have done every day for five years, like getting up early, all of a sudden feels way more difficult because there's this sense of like, does it even matter? What are yeah. we doing? Like, I definitely have those days. But I found that the best days I have are when I stick to my habits, when I stick to my rituals. So for me, that looks like moving my body every single day. So every single day, getting some kind of workout in where I am moving my body. I went on a run this morning with my daughter, pushing her in the stroller, um, making sure I'm still getting good nutrition, which is funky because, you know, we're kind of eating what there is to eat, uh, yeah. drinking enough water, my daily gratitude practice, all those things that really were helpful for me before, I think have become even more so this like way that I'm centering myself in the midst of this chaos. And it's interesting. I think for some people, part of the challenge is like, maybe you were in a really good groove with your exercise um, because you'd go to the gym that was across the street from your office or, you know, you'd go, you do a class before you picked up your kids. Um, or, you know, you had your, um, you know, you had your snack at 3 p.m. with your friend and, um, and now it's, you know, all that kind of stuff is disrupted. I wonder of the people watching, like, what are the habits that you're like able to grasp onto? Like you say, it's comforting to have these yeah. habits stick with us, even when it's challenging. I wonder what people are trying to um, hold on to. Yeah, so so like for me, the couple of things it it definitely has. Um, I'm outside running more than I have than I was before, just because yes. it is my opportunity to get outside. I can't really go anywhere. So and I live out in the country, so I don't know what the rules are if you're in cities. But you know, I'm out on a country road, no one's around me, so it's it's easy for me to put on my sneakers and go. Um, I would say too, I have tried to maybe this sounds silly, but I've tried to recreate some of my favorite parts. <laughs> about being outside of the house in my house. Oh. So I, one of my favorite things in life is coffee. I love coffee and it's a special treat for me to go to my favorite coffee shops and get a yeah. coffee and yeah. I can't do that. So I have started this ritual of every day at 3 p.m. I had it a little early cause I wanted to get it in before we talked. Every day <laughs> at, at 3 p.m. I have um, I have a little like espresso machine here that I never really used before. And so every day it's just my ritual at three o'clock. I go in and I have an espresso and I have a little chocolate bar and it's just become this little thing for me to look forward to in the afternoon because I can't go anywhere and get coffee anymore. 
Um, so maybe that seems silly, but if you're watching at home, you have this opportunity to recreate yeah. the things that you loved before. They're not going to be the same, but what were the pieces of it that you liked so much that you can kind of create a new habit around what it looks like in quarantine? This is a great suggestion, and I'm going to suggest it to my daughter, Eleanor, who's in ninth grade. So she really loved like going to get like an iced coffee with her friends after school. I think it made her feel like very grown up and totally. was just discovering coffee. And so maybe I should say like, oh, maybe after school, which is all virtual, you guys can like make a date and, yeah. and sit down, like make it yourself and sit down and FaceTime right then or something to kind that's of so have cool. that like, let's have that coffee after school. I think that's a great idea. It's interesting. Oh, somebody says, I've been creating my own yummy coffee drinks too at home. So I think that's something that's resonating with people. Looks like a lot of people do yoga um, and walking and then writing in a journal. How many people, give us a thumbs up if you are writing in a journal um, like more than you usually do or for the first time because of the COVID-19. Like I am keeping a COVID-19 journal. I wonder if other people are doing the same. Yeah. I definitely, um, ta I, so I do my journal every day, but I put at the top of my journal that I'm in, like in the top of my journal, I do week four quarantine. Oh, <laughs> that's interesting. Like I, I just because I always want to be able to look back and understand what state of mind I was in. Yeah. I've yeah. done that for years though. If I'm writing in my journal on vacation, I'll note where I am in the world. Yes. Um, if I'm on an airplane, like anything that I'm doing, because just, I love to review the things that I've written later and, um, I think it really helps to know what the frame of mind was when you wrote it. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, I think with, oh, well um, one of the things that I've been doing too is, uh, sorry about my phone. Uh, it only You're rains fine. if I'm doing this. Um, uh, like where I've been like recording kind of what level we were on because uh, like different things, things were changing so rapidly for a while yeah. um, here in yeah. New York City that um, it was like, things that seem unimaginable now we were doing five weeks ago or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, look, there's a lot of thumbs up. So I think a lot of people are finding that, um, uh, Oh, someone's saying instead of meeting friends in person, I highly recommend virtual video calls, happy hours, coffee dates. I am doing that so much. Yeah. Um, how about you, Rachel? Yeah. So we have, um, I have a really good friend. He's a DJ. He DJs all of my conferences and he's been doing a weekly DJ set on Instagram live where he'll like play just fun music. And so me and all my other friends will do a zoom call where we have a cocktail and we watch him DJ oh. and it sort of feels like we're like in a place we're at someone's yeah. wedding or something, just having yeah. fun together. Yeah. Um, the, I wanted to say, I did see a note just because I feel like it's important to touch on. Someone said she wants to journal, but she feels like she has so many strong emotions that it, she hesitates to start. And man, you're the person who needs to journal the most because journaling will allow you to work through and process a lot of the things that you're feeling. And there's something about putting it on paper. I think we talked about this on the podcast, yeah. that like when you put it on paper, it takes a little bit of the power away from the things that you're so afraid of. Yeah, when you're able to like, see it. Yeah, there's immense amount of research about this, why kind of shaping a narrative really helps us to make sense of it and also to find meaning in it. I also think like if you can't really face it, there's funny, there's kind of other kinds of journals, like one sentence journal, which is something I'm a big fan of, or like a picture every day, or, um, you know, outfits, or, you know, just maybe like the, the, you know, the iconic items that you're like the hundred items of the COVID-19. Yeah. Um, so if you're just joining, it's me, Gretchen Rubin, uh, host of the Happier with Gretchen Rubin podcast. And I'm here with Rachel Hollis, who is host of the Rise podcast, as well as the author of Girl, Wash Your Face and Girl, Stop Apologizing. Yeah, girl, stop touching your face. I oh, know. My oh, hands are very face. clean. My hands are very clean. I wash them 10,000 times a day. I wash I mean, them 10,000 times a day. I don't know how I ever got any typing done because literally all I do all day is touch my face. I, mean, I, I feel like I walk ah, around with I my even hands. Think of it. I don't even think of it until someone says something. That's why I keep having oh. to wash. No, no, no. Um, I just watch constantly. Yeah. You said something too that I thought was so great. We talked about this too. Um, we both are into the idea of cleaning and organizing our homes during yes. this season. And yeah. I, man, that is so helpful for me. It is so helpful for me to like, on the days where I feel so overwhelmed, I literally am like, all right, I'm reorganizing this drawer. And then just like yeah. one little thing helps give me some sense of control and makes me feel better. So I highly recommend that to those of you who need something to do. 
I think it's also a really nice thing to do. If you get up in the middle of the night and you can't go back to sleep, one of the things research shows is that if you get up and you do sort of like a light activity, not reading a book or watching TV or, you know, for sure not checking the news, but just kind of puttering, that tends to help you go to bed, go to sleep again, like if you get back in bed 20 minutes later. And I find that that kind of light kind of one drawer or like I cleaned out my utility closet and then you wake <laughs> up in the morning and you feel amazing. <laughs> Um, well, so Rachel, with all the viewers so connected to your audience, what do you think is the biggest challenge that people, I mean, obviously there's the enorm, there's the, the giant dire consequences and there's the healthcare workers and the essential workers and the people who are really at the front lines. But for those people who are safe at home, working at home, managing schoolwork with their kids, like what do you think is the thing that's the hardest? I think uh, this is gonna sound so cliche, but I really do think it's managing your mindset. I yeah. think that it's okay, so thumbs up if you feel like that's yeah. your problem, if you're watching. Yeah, and you I feel like, because I really do, when I step back and think about it, being at home, being safe at home right now is a privilege that yes. not everybody gets for a lot of different reasons. And so it's really easy to spiral out when you're at home because your mind starts to race and it starts to think about what if, what if, what if, yeah. Yeah. and yeah. fear takes over. And so managing your mindset, not just once, sometimes for me in a day, I might have to manage it 50 times to just yeah. keep coming back to like, we are all safe. Everybody yeah. right now today, everybody that you know and love is safe. They're okay. You have food in the fridge. Your babies are here. Yeah, they're driving you crazy, but they're <laughs> okay. Like at the end of the day, just to keep coming back to that check in with yourself of like, Right now, in this present moment, we're all fine. And if I let my mind, it will completely run away with me. And so I just keep having to come back to like managing where we are today. I, I don't want to go through this time period and come out the other end worse. I yeah. really do yeah. think that we have an opportunity that we're going to go through this either way. And there's going to be pain in it. There's going to be fear inside of it. Things are happening in the world that are so sad and upsetting and so hard for so many people and we're gonna have to walk through that either way but we have the opportunity to come out this as a stronger version of ourselves as better parents as more empathetic humans as better friends like there's so there is meaning inside of this if we choose to yeah. look for it and we yeah. fight for it and so that's what I keep coming back to every single day yeah my sister and I were talking about creating a, a mantra for COVID-19 and her mantra was closer, stronger, lighter. Mm. So, and she, her thing, and I, 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 I give us a thumbs up if you agree. I think in a way we're gonna come out of this closer to the people because we're making such an effort to connect and we have to go out yes. of our way to connect. We can't be lazy, we have to be deliberate. We have to reach out to people. And also just the gratitude. I mean, how many people were so grateful for the people stocking grocery stores? I mean, yes. now my heart bursts every time I see somebody like in a Kroger apron, you know? Agree. And, and um, there's just, you realize like the bus drivers, um, I see these buses going up and down the avenues and I'm like, oh my gosh, the bus drivers. And so there is this element of um, connecting with other people and, and like feeling grateful for them. And like, we all feel so, so connected to other parts of the world, like Italy. Like I spent so much time thinking about Italy, yes. you know? Um, so we, there, there is a sense that we can we can find meaning here. Absolutely. I love that. I love that. And I love the, the reminder of feeling grateful for things you absolutely took for granted. Yes. A month ago. Toilet paper. Uh, yes. Thank you. But my big thing is um, fresh vegetables. Like for yes. some reason it's been, or maybe it's like this for everybody watching, but it's been hard to find a lot of lettuce here and I'm in Austin I'm kind of out in the country and so sometimes I go and it's there and sometimes I go and it's not and green vegetables are a big part of my diet obviously I will be fine I'm so blessed like I have plenty of food to eat but it's been there's been something weird um that sort of messes with my head of like oh and now I can't be healthy and whatever and going to the store and they have the veggies that I want. Like I literally cried at the grocery store in like a full mask and rubber gloves because they have romaine lettuce and they didn't have it the last two times. Yeah. Or they have well, so kale. Put, it, put it in the comments. What is, what's something that you're thankful for in particular? What's something that you're thankful for that you never expected to be thankful for? Like you're thankful for 
toilet paper. You're thankful for lettuce. Um, yeah. Eggs. Like I eat so many eggs, uh, like so many eggs. And yeah. every time I see a full egg carton, I like, I'm like, you know, rubbing my hand like a miser right. with his gold, you know, yes. like look at the eggs. Um, yeah. Um, uh, someone says, yeah, the grocery store now makes me so emotional. Yeah. I mean, it is. Um, I know my sister went to the grocery store for the first time in a couple of weeks and she said it was like a very intense experience. It is. It yeah. is. It's so it's like, it makes you sad. It makes you anxious. It also, it also brings me joy because I'm seeing humans when I haven't seen yeah. any humans in person. And, yeah. and just like, it's all of the emotions of of it and you think about how many people um we're here in texas we have a, a texas grocery store chain called heb which is like a very popular thing and the people who work there are angels like they're just the best and it's like they are working so hard and they're oh you just froze rachel hang on oh you froze I don't know if anybody is seeing her freeze or if that's just me because it's the mystery of the internet. Um, so while we're waiting for Rachel to come back, I will say grateful for hugs, grateful for cucumbers. That's a good one. I can't get ice cream. Because having a job. Oh my God. But I can work remotely. Oh, um, oh, yes, there's a freeze. Let's see if Rachel can join again. Um, and while we're waiting for her to join again, if we said that, um, you know, technology is great with it works, keep answering, um, what are you grateful for? Because I think this is really a great reminder to all of us of all the things that we can. Grateful for canned chickpeas. There we go. Truck drivers. I cry on the way to the grocery once a week and see a truck driver bringing necessities. Says, I completely agree when I see the delivery trucks with um, coming up. Someone saying, I'm grateful that everyone is going after breads and ice cream and there's definitely more veggies available now. Okay. Thanks for butter. Oh, I agree with that. Postmates delivers produce in my area. Um, that's excellent. Um, well, okay, we're waiting for her to come back. I think she's coming back. Learning to wash my hands and disinfecting the house. Zucchini. There you are. Hey. I'm so sorry. I was so dramatic about my grocery store chain. And it, 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 it's <laughs> you almost her out. <laughs> hey, so I have a question for everyone. Who, give us a thumbs up if you are pairing watching this with some kind of exercise. Are you doing yoga poses? Are you stretching? Are you lifting weights? Are you out for a walk and wa you know on a treadmill? Like I love to know if people um, are using this time uh, to get their exercise in because you mentioned that right at the beginning, Rachel, yeah. um, about how moving every day and clearly like there's tremendous amount of research that even a little bit is such a big boost. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so um, I put back on, um, this is a pedometer. Uh, it's a, uh, I, I use it when I do long runs so that I can track my mileage, but I never wore it during the day mm. ever. And um, if you have a Fitbit, if you have a pedometer, if you have something that you can put on that will just remind you to move, yes. this yes. literally will vibrate on my wrist if I haven't moved for over an hour and it literally just be like move. And yes. it's helping me to make sure that I am getting those steps in and I am getting some energy out. There's so many ways you can do movement there's youtube videos there's yeah. instagram videos you could jump up and down you could dance around to your favorite music in your kitchen like you have options to make sure that you're moving and it is so great lowers your cortisol levels gets your heart rate pumping like it's only good things that happen when you do that so i just really want to challenge you if you're watching this challenge yourself to move every day it is yeah. so 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 powerful yeah. In fact, there was just an article in the in the New York Times today about research that shows that even four thousand steps a day, which is which is very low. If you think that ten thousand is sort of the um, is the number that everybody talks about, even four thousand, and even that's just like ambling around your house, um, makes a big difference. So that's absolutely true. If you're just joining, it's me, Gretchen Rubin, host of the Happier with Gretchen Rubin podcast, talking to Rachel Hollis host of the Rise podcast and um, Girl Wash Your Face and Girl Stop Apologizing, of course. And we are talking about coping with COVID-19. Now, Rachel, what is your tendency? You know, I have my four tendencies framework. Do you remember your tendency? Yeah. Um, I'm not going to say the right word, but I'm the one that's totally internally motivated. Which yes. one is that one? You're an upholder, I think. I'm an upholder. I yeah. will do, you don't need, no one needs to tell me to do anything. I will check off the list. I will create the list. I will, yes. In, in Enneagram world, we call it an achiever. And in your, in tendencies, we call it the upholder. I am that for sure. 
No, so Rachel, here's my my challenge as an upholder in these times is I, I want to march around with a clipboard because I think <laughs> other people will feel good if they do all the things and they wake up on time and they do their exercise and they keep their journal and they and 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 the other members of my family are sort of saying mm, we don't want your clipboard um do you struggle with like sort of wanting to it's reassuring for us as upholders and by the way if you don't know what an upholder is what we're talking about you can take the quiz at quiz.gretchenrubin.com and it will tell you if you're an upholder like us or a questioner or an obliger or a rebel so that's quiz.gretchenrubin.com but do you find that you have to hold yourself back from kind of over um, I think I mostly kind of internalize the things that ah. I want accomplished I definitely have things that I want my oldest is so my kids are 13 11 7 and 3 and for the boys especially so those are the three oldest they have to contribute every single day to what we're doing as a family so they have chores and activities that they have to take part of because we're all in this together and you can't just hang out while mommy does everything. So I wouldn't really call that being an upholder. I just think that's like, you guys Damn need it. to do the dishes sometimes yeah. too. Yeah. Um, the rest of it, I am doing a lot of activities. Like I said, organizing, cleaning, baking, whatever. But that there's a joy that I get. I don't need anyone else to do that. That's more just like, I want to put on some country music and my AirPods and I want to like, clean all the baseboards. Uh, but I don't necessarily need anyone else to do it too. I just want to do it myself. That's good. I think that's, I think that's the healthier way. And I'm really trying <laughs> to be better about that because I'm sort of like, I want to, you know, my sister calls me a happiness bully and I'm like, but you'll feel better. You should, you know, and I, and I forget. That's a that good that line. Yeah. Not everyone is like me. Um, so I, oh, it's so fun to see what everyone is, uh, all their tendencies. Um, a couple of rebels have been saying that they are feeling the weight of this as rebels because rebels want to do what they want to do when they want to do it. Yeah. And this is all about following the rules and like and 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 limiting Ooh. choices. But That's rebels, you, you, rebels, you can tell yourself this is what you want. Um, it's your identity to be a good citizen. And also, you don't want to be controlled by a virus. The virus is trying to take over your body and use you to spread itself and you are not going to be controlled you're not going to be used in that way um okay. you'll show the you'll show the virus who's in charge um again that's quiz.gretchenrubin.com if you want to know your tendency um and um but so but but you 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 sort of so casually said that you get your children to do these things What's your secret for getting for cooperation? I think that is a um, good challenge. Well, so one, the one thing I'll say is that doing chores has been a part of our family since they were little. So we start um, with, let's say my daughter who's three, she doesn't have chores, but she definitely, if we're playing in her room, we sing the cleanup song and, and she's not gonna do it all, but I do want her to go through the process of putting toys back where they go. And as they get older, I would start to give them little chores that didn't really do anything, but just, okay, the big boys have to do this. And then my youngest son, like, you have to go straighten the pillows. Like, it would just be yeah. something simple so that he felt right. like he was contributing. So now there are things that they just have to do. Every single day of my kids' lives, they have to make their bed. And I don't care if it's the worst made bed in the entire world. They have to do it. Um, so there's just stuff like that that have always been a part of our family. I would say if you haven't really done that before and you're looking to incorporate it into your routine now that you're in quarantine, the easiest thing in the world is if you don't, you don't get technology unless you have done these three things every day. And I don't know about your kids, but my kids, if they don't have access to the technology that they love, their life is over. And so it's like, great, you get your tech time. But in order to get your tech time, these things always have to be achieved. And it's really easy for me as their mom to see like, okay, your bed's made, you did the dishes in the sink, and you fed the dog. Go ahead. Now you get to play Minecraft or whatever. Right, 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 right. Um, and um, so here's another question for you. Um, what do you think is like a quick, easy way to get yourself, um, like you, you talk a lot about joy and finding the joy, even in these dark times, what do you think, or you've mentioned some already, like l putting on country music or, you know, going for a run or you're, you've got your ritual about your coffee. What are some other things that you've incorporated, uh, either for yourself or for your family or for your team to kind of try to get that lift when you feel that everything's sort of all the color is draining out of the world? 
so we have we have a pretty big staff here in Austin. We have 60 ish team members and we do um two times a day we have a zoom dance party so at 9 30 every day and 3 30 every day the wow. company gets on zoom and everyone dances for a single song and the introverts i would have it. to quit i would have to quit your team i know i have such a bad it. or like turn they off the camera it. <laughs> they hate it but at the same time i'm like well this is our company <laughs> culture you knew what you were signing on for so they're used yeah. to me by now but doing things like that 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 thing that's going to make you feel better you make it a habit that yeah. has really helped um i don't i haven't been going on social media a lot because i just think there's an opportunity for me to see things that are going to make me anxious the exception mm -hmm. of that is i will just go to meme accounts where i'll just look at, i'm just want to laugh if i'm right. watching netflix i just want to watch stand-up comedy um or the tiger king because that was spectacular have you seen that Gretchen, no, stuff if you see the Tiger King. I have not seen it. I can't imagine a world in which I would be interested in this, and yet everybody says it's so great or it's so mesmerizing. Wild! It is the mesmerizing is the perfect word. It is exactly what you need during quarantine. It is the weirdest, and you're like, this can't get weirder. And then there's another episode, and it was not something I would normally ever watch. Yeah. But in the chaos of what's happening, it was like perfect. I highly recommend. There's only like six episodes. So. I thought nothing could be more like strange and out of the box than Love is Blind, which people also told oh, me that. Seen that. Like, I seen yeah, that. but people also say it's like kind of just, it's so totally unexpected or that, yeah. <laughs> so how many people, how many people are doing this? How many people are either like deliberately steering away from news or social media or by identifying things that are like, uh, a refuge, you know, that are that they yeah. know are kind of uh, predict or like they can count on to to boost their spirits. Yes. Uh, somebody says love is Bl love is blind is incredible TV. Somebody says I'm Gretchen. I I'll try it. Didn't want to watch, but got hooked. Yeah, I think it's a car crash. I mean, it, yeah, it, that's it's fun. just it's crazy, but it's like the kind of I love as a, as a writer, I am always fascinated by real life that is crazier than any fiction anyone yes. could make. Yes. Yeah. So I love that. I love documentary style shooting and it is, and it's over yeah. several years, which is really interesting. That's cool. But um, I also, and I don't even care. You can judge me for this. It is real. I love a romance novel. I love a romance novel. And this is the time for a romance novel. This yeah. is the time to read about a Duke falling in love <laughs> with a blue stocking this is the moment like yeah. that is something right now in my life that brings me joy and i am unapologetic about like i can't watch the news because it freaks me out i will yeah. get my information from world health organization or cdc so i'm just getting the news i'm not getting anything else that goes with it right. and then i'm i'm intentionally pulling myself off a device like this one to entertain myself with something fun so that i get i get a bit of joy at the end of the night as well so everybody, I would love for people to put in any novels that they're reading, any TV shows, any podcasts that they're listening to that they feel like, oh my gosh, this is the perfect thing for the moment. This is like exactly what I need. Because when you find that thing, it's so just delicious. Um, yes. you know, I think a lot of people are sort of rereading something that they know that they love yes. or rewatching yes. something. And if you're just joining, it's me, Gretchen Rubin, host of The Happier Podcast with Rachel Hollis, host of The Rise Podcast and author of Girl, Watch Your Face and Girl, Stop Apologizing. And right now we're talking about what we need. I mean, one of the things I talk about a lot is healthy treats, because I think when we have healthy treats, we are, we are energized so we don't need to reach for unhealthy treats. And something like romance novels, reality TV, competition TV, those can be great healthy treats in moderation you know you don't want to spend 10 hours uh, but sure, but most, sure. but in 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 moderation or like you know you're probably not going to read a romance novel for 10 hours a day someone might but <laughs> no, probably, no 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 probably in you're fact, not going to do that I, I mean this is my thing too i have never worked harder in my life than i have in the last five weeks and that's saying something uh, because yeah. we just sort of had to pivot and figure everything else, figure out things and what we're writing and what we're creating and what that looks like and managing a team virtually and all of these things. So when I'm treating myself, it's a way to shut my brain off after a full day of 
I have made every decision. I have created so much content and now is the time for me to just chill out. And so I'm going to go sit on the back patio with my LaCroix or I'm going to go read a book or I'm just going to do something that allows my brain to um, sort of let go of everything that it's been working on all day long. And are you good about sort of having a quitting time or do, are you sort of working and doing your home life and your personal life kind of woven throughout the day? Um, so I am being, I'm being very intentional about coming into this room, this is my home office and working really hard and being very productive. I leave this room at 12 o'clock. I'll go have, I have about an hour where I'll have lunch and I get to interact with the kids and do whatever, and then come back in here and do four more good hours and then be done. Because otherwise I will obsess and keep coming back in here and keep doing more work because the work never ends. Yeah. Um, so my goal is to be finished working every day at four so that I can, because I'm, I'm working more hours than I normally would be. I don't have a commute anymore. Right. So that time that I was normally commuting, I'm just now at my desk. And so I want to, I want to shut it off because otherwise I'm going to, I'm going to go too hard. And I also at the, by four o'clock, by four o'clock, my brain oh, oh. is like gone. I can't do anything else. Right. But I remember when we, so I was on your podcast today. I think the, the episode just went yes, live today. Yeah. And you said something that was so interesting about how you had found that you would, you were sort of dipping your toe into email and it would be, get you very agitated. And so yes. now you're being much more mindful of like, when I sit down to work, I sit down to work. I don't, I don't let it seep in or I don't like raise things in my mind until I'm ready to cope with them Absolutely. because it was so draining. And I thought that was such a simple shift but brilliant um yeah be and it so really it's really being me. disciplined well part of it too is that my morning routine used to happen in this room so i i would come in here so i don't wake anybody up because i get up at five i would come in and i would do my gratitude practice and i would read i would have my coffee and now this room is where all my work stuff is and so uh, what i found was that i went into quarantine i would come in here at 5 a.m and i would start working which is insane and so then i'm losing my morning routine yeah. and i'm arming myself with all sorts of fires that need to be put out when no one else is awake to help me yes put them out so i've just i'm like nope you still are going to start at the same time we're not going to be crazy we're going to be more intentional about this well and i think that's a great example of what i think a lot of people are experiencing which is that you might have had a very healthy routine or have it and now it's disrupted. And so you yes. sort of have to see all the pieces on the floor and then figure out how to put it together again in a new way. And that for some people or some circumstances might be fairly straightforward. And for other people that might be much more challenging, especially with a habit that maybe was pretty hard to get in place. Maybe it took you years to start exercising yes. regularly. And now you're like, overnight, I got to like come up with some whole new plan. That's hard for, for, for some people in some situations. Absolutely. I always say if you're trying to add a new habit or in this case sort of recreate something in a new environment, I always think the best way to add a great habit is on the tail end of something you already do habitually. Yes. So, That's called piggybacking in the habit. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Okay. You know the fancy terms. I always just tell people like, <laughs> Piggyback. If, you want to, if you want to drink more water, then yeah. do some, take something you already do, like brushing your teeth, have your reusable water bottle there ready to go in the morning so that as soon as you brush your teeth, you chug a bottle, bottle of water and then you're kind of, you're adding a new thing that's accomplishing your goal and ta piggybacking off of something that's already part of your life. Yeah, yeah, that's great advice. Well, Rachel, this was great. Every day we give a yeah. little challenge to um, everybody for the next day. And you threw out a challenge already, but maybe you want to cut, even have another challenge. But one of your, cha your challenges was brilliant, which is just to move, to find a way to get that movement, because it just, it, that's going to pay off in so many different ways. That's an amazing yeah. challenge. Is there any other challenge you want to add or you want to stand on that challenge? Uh, no. So, so we are doing as a community a challenge, a three month challenge. And our um, theme this week is joy. We started talking about this idea of joy. And so what I yeah. challenge my community to do is to make a joy list make a list of things right now that you can access right now that bring you joy. For me, it's a great cup of coffee or looking out at a view or playing with my kids or laughing. Be very specific about things that make you happy that you can reach for when you're having a hard day and that you can program into your schedule. And it really 
elevates what would otherwise be a day sort of where you're like, oh, it's a hard day. I don't know how to make it better. Well, dang it. If you've got a joy list, you've got 15 things you could do right now that would bring you some, some levity. That is a great, great challenge. Okay. So everybody do that for tomorrow. We'll be back. Elizabeth will be back with me and we'll check in on your challenge. Um, you can listen to our conversation on Rachel's podcast, Rise. Um, and we've talked, we've gone back and forth um, on different things. It's always so much fun. Um, I did mention the quiz. You can take the free quiz if you want at quiz.gretchenrubin.com and find out what your tendency is. Um, this was so much fun, Rachel. Thank you yeah, so much. Thank it's you always so, so much. great to talk to you. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye.